Okay, I'm gonna show you how to build a gate. Some of the tools I'm gonna to use are my circular saw. I've got my nails for fixing my timber. Some clamps are holding it all together. My dust mask, earring protection and glasses. Tape measure, square and pencil. My drill and impact drive for putting my screws in. My screws, hand saw and some additional drill bits for different sizes. And I've also got down here my material which I'm gonna use. I've got some treated pine fence palings and some treated pine for my rails. I'm going to build a gate for a bit of security and privacy. It also improves my street appeal. Uh, I will be checking with council before I start just to make sure if there's any regulations I need to adhere to. I've already been around the side of the house and I've measured up what width I need and what height I need. I'm going to be using the same material that the fence is made out of so it blends in nicely. Make sure you consider the thickness of your side rails. They'll need to be considered when you measure the width of your gate and any um, clearance that you need for your gate as well because you want uh, at least that sort of 20 mil clearance for your gate to swing open and closed. Okay, I've got my rails here now for my gate that I'm gonna make. I've set it up on this big timber deck here. What I'm gonna do before I cut these, I'm gonna square these off, but out of the factory, they're not always square. It's a good idea when you're cutting any material. Cut a few uh, millimetres off the end of it to square it right up. I'm now going to measure and cut my two vertical side rails. I've already got my dimensions, so I'm gonna measure those out now and cut them. I've only marked and measured this outside timber. The end of my timbers there are nice and flush. I'm gonna transfer my mark right across both pieces and uh, both pieces are marked from the one dimension, thereby minimising the chance of mistakes. I'm now gonna cut my three horizontal fence railings. Before I cut these, I need to keep in mind that I need to subtract the combined thickness of these two vertical rails as well. I've now got all my rails cut, my three horizontal rails and my two vertical rails. I'm gonna measure up 200 mil from the bottom of my gate. I'm gonna put a plinth board across the bottom here uh, and that'll allow the vertical fence palings to sit down on the top. So I'm up 200 from the bottom. I've measured 70 mil for the width of my horizontal rail. So I'm gonna measure out now where all my three uh, horizontal rails will go in. They'll be evenly spaced. I'll bring one down from the top and I'll have one centered right in the middle. Uh, it'll, it'll look appealing, but it'll also give a lot of strength as well. Now that I've marked out my positions for my horizontal gate rail, I'm gonna transfer those marks over so both uh, vertical rails have both those dimensions on them. I'm now gonna put my horizontal rails in and drill and screw those into position. So all I'm doing is drilling right through the center of the timber, right through. So when the screw does go in, the threaded section of the screw is pulling up against the horizontal timber. It's not screwing in to this part. It'll clear straight through the timber and screw this one up nice and tight. So I'm gonna repeat the process on this side for what I've done over there. I'm gonna line up my horizontal uh, rails, screw them off, same as I've done on the other side. I've now drilled all of my holes along the side here. I'm now gonna screw my screws through. And as I'm screwing, I'm gonna make sure that my timber is lined up with my marks. Now that I've assembled the frame of the gate, I'm gonna check it for square. So to ensure that the gate is square, both diagonals must be the same length. To keep the gate square, we need to add something else. We're gonna now put some bracing in. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna put a center mark at both ends of the timber, and I'm gonna put it underneath. You can see the center line I've got in here. I'm now using it at both ends to get right into that corner. Now that we know that the gate is parallel, I can mark that, and I'm gonna cut that for my brace. So I know which corner this goes into because they can become quite confusing. I'm just gonna mark it with an A. So once it's cut, I know that that part has to go into that corner. I've made my cuts. I've got my A on this side. It tells me exactly where I go. I'm just gonna use my timber here to knock it down. Just gonna keep knocking it down so it's nice and flush. Now that I've got my brace in position to keep it in there whilst we put the gate together, I'm gonna to screw it like I did with the two horizontal rails. Just one screw into this face, another screw in the top face, and that'll keep it in there. I've got my bottom brace in now. 
I'm going to do the same thing with the top brace. Both braces will run in that same direction and uh, that picks up a lot of weight from the hinge side and keeps the gate nice and square. Now that I've got the gate together, I'm now going to install the plinth board on the bottom of the gate here. It goes flush on the outside of the frame on both sides, flush on the bottom. Now I've got my mark on it, I'm going to cut it. To cut the size, now I'm going to shoot it down. Now that I've got my plinth board on the bottom, I can start putting my palings on. Start with the wide board. Wide board's the first one it goes on. It's going to sit down nice and flush on the top of the edge there of the plinth board. The process now is to position one large board in, and then I lap it over with the narrow board. Now to keep the gap equal, I'm going to use an off cut from my rails in there, and you can see that that gap that the off cuts create still gives me plenty of room to lap my narrow board over the top. So I'll go along now and put all the bigger boards on first using these packers. The next step is to put our narrow boards over the top of our larger base boards, our bottom boards. Now this is really just a visual thing. You're now gonna line a few of them up, just center them and then shoot them in position. Now that I've shot all the palings on, my next step will be to mark and cut a nice clean line across the top at the finished height of my gate. I'll use a bit of off-cut timber, a nice mark through, and I'll use a saw and cut it. But I'm also gonna use this paling as a straight edge. I'm gonna clamp it down so I can run my saw along it. It gives me a nice straight finish. I know that from the, the face of my blade to the outside is 36 millimeters. So all I need to do from the line that I want to uh, finish on, I'm gonna measure 36 mil, two ends, and that'll allow me to run my saw straight along that edge. That's how easy it is to build your own gate. It's now ready to be installed.